SIGR is the Center of Excellence for Gastrointestinal Inflammation and Immunity Research. Uh, SIGR is uh, designed as a center to uh, investigate some of the uh, causes of inflammation of the GI tract. So SIGR focuses a lot on inflammatory bowel disease, both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And we've recognized over the years that patients are born with genetic mutation that allows them to get these diseases, but they're triggered by something in the environment or something in our own gut, probably the microbial agents that are there. And so Seeger is currently focusing on studying not only the environmental triggers to inflammatory bowel disease, but also the microbial triggers to inflammatory bowel disease. And then back to treatment, how we could change the microbes and actually treat or manage some of those inflammatory bowel diseases. So the Seeger Biobank is actually a collection of biological samples from patients with inflammatory bowel disease, as well as uh, controls and other diseases like liver disease. And so patients would come in and give often urine samples or serum samples, and then when they went for endoscopy, would often collect samples from either gastroscopies or colonoscopies, which would be uh, fr frozen and stored for uh, later use. So the biobank is actually quite extensive. There's probably about 5,000 patients that are, are currently um, have been samples um, stored. Some of them are actually repeated samples, so they might be at different stages of the disease, so maybe periods of disease activity and disease remission. And also there's blood samples and urine samples from different stages of their disease as well. Here we have a number of specialized clinics that we do for the inflammatory bowel disease patients. And so one is the pediatric transition clinic that I run. And so we actually take the patients that are turning 18 as they uh, become adults. Another clinic that we have is a pregnancy clinic. So patients both when they're thinking about getting pregnant and throughout their pregnancy where we actually are collecting a lot of biobank specimens at the different stages to try to understand the different reasons why people might flare during pregnancy while other patients actually stay in remission or go into remission during pregnancy. So here at the U we have a large endoscopic suite with a lot of advanced endoscopy so uh, personally I'm involved in the small bowel program. I'm one of the two docs here who does that and so we do a lot of video capsule endoscopy, balloon assisted enteroscopy, uh, double balloon endoscopy, single balloon endoscopy. And so that's a big part of the things we're doing. We also have a advanced biliary program, so we're doing EUS, um, we're doing spyglass endoscopy here through ERCP, a lot of ERCPs, and then of course we've got an you know, uh, ongoing kind of standard endoscopy program as well. Fecal microbiota transplantation, or known as FMT, really is a transfer of stool from a healthy individual into a sick patient. So the current success rate of fecal transplant within the context of Seeger is that we have an overall success rate of 95% when it comes to treating recurrent Clostridium difficile infection. Uh, we set up this program back in October 2012, and so far we have treated about 150 patients. I was diagnosed with recurrent C. diff. They prescribed me something called FMT, which is fecal microbiota transplant. I feel better than excellence, and I had this transplant March 19th, and the day after I felt better. I could tell you, like night and day, Without getting emotional, I feel very blessed and humbled that I have this. We are very interested in how the Western lifestyle really affects GI disease. If you look at what has changed in the Western lifestyle, one of the big things is our diet, especially considering um, we have now a huge reduction in the amount of fiber we intake, a decrease in the amount of fruits and vegetables we eat, along with an increase in refined and highly processed food. Yeah, as we have found that our Western lifestyle is really changing our gut microbiota, the question is then can we look at the gut microbiota and change it to make it more beneficial to human health? And if it is a case where we are missing certain strains or species of bacteria, can we simply put those back in the form of probiotics? Or can we increase fiber in the diet to actually help the beneficial microbes grow? Or, if that doesn't work, can we do fecal microbial transplantation to replace an entire ecosystem? But we're interested in viruses that can alter your gut microbiome and therefore trigger diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease. We're also interested in liver diseases that may be caused by viruses, so we've already found a virus in patients with an autoimmune liver disease, primary biliary cirrhosis, and we've built up our program based on this, uh, looking at how this beta retrovirus 
triggers the disease in humans, study how this virus causes disease in mice, and then we use these mice to find new treatments for patients. We've taken these same antiretroviral therapies to the clinic, and we treat patients with primary biliary cirrhosis with antiretrovirals, and we observe that their symptoms improve, the liver tests improve. We have a real bench to bedside approach for treating our patients. The technologies that we have available to us within Seeger are emerging and, and really amplifying in a way that, that I'm very excited about. We have access to excellent cell and animal models. We have a biobank which is huge and will give us um, samples to study almost any genetic mutation that we're interested in. And of course the microbiome facility and the genetic uh, components that we have within that will enable us to continue and define the microbiome, metagenome, and other omics that are developing at a very expedited rate within Seeker. The future is bright, I think, with the techniques that we are using with the metagenomics. We are now studying um, how microbes function, we're studying who is there. With these techniques, with the interactions between the basic scientists and the clinicians, I think we have a very bright future in understanding these diseases.